Hi guys, welcome back. So this is my second part on the introduction to the Cold War video. Um, so what I really wanted to emphasize on this video is um, Berlin. Uh, like I said, uh, this right here, I'm going to use my highlighter again. Uh, this is the capital, the city of Berlin, okay, which is located right here in the middle of the Soviet Union part. We know that the country of Germany was divided into four. We know that the city, the capital, was divided into four. And today we're going to, I'm going to actually show you video, I mean, pictures from the trip that I did to Berlin, which is going to be kind of cool, and I'll be talking about this. Um, but basically, we have to think about why would this country be divided into the four winners. Um, so I want you to think about that. Why would Germany be divided into four parts by the winners of World War II? Um, Germany is divided because uh, they wanted to make sure that they were weak enough so that they could not gain power again. They wanted to divide it as a way of making sure they could control the military and the military power and economic power that Germany had. There's like multiple reasons. But we're going to focus on the city of Berlin. So this right here is any city. This happens to Berlin where this happens. So Miss G's trip to Berlin. Let me just show you some pictures. And I, I always do this in class. So it's kind of fun. So, oh, okay. So let's take it back to the end of World War II. So there's this thing called the armistice that is signed in November 11th. Um, 1945 or 1944 um, in this building. This is the building in which the Nazi um, military comes and signs this unconditional surrender. Um, this is after Hitler commits to this building. And this is the actual room in which World War II ended. This is the actual chairs, the actual table where the Nazi um, uh, generals signed this document and you can walk and visit it and it's very very cool just to be in that scene. We're going to see this is the act of military surrender and I'm going to get like real close and I'm going to read what is actually this document reads and it says uh, we the undersigned that means the people that are signing the document over here meeting by the authority of the German high command her by surrender unconditionally to the Supreme Commander of the Allied Forces, um, which would be the Red Army. We know that the Red Army, which is the Army of the Soviet Union, actually is the one that's there and, <clears throat> excuse me, um, uh, making sure that uh, Germany has like officialized their loss in World War II. Uh, people that signed, we're going to see the commander of the Red Army uh, Allied Expeditionary Forces. We're also going to see the French Army, the United States Strategic Air Forces. This are this is the document in which World War II officially is right there. Um, I took this other picture, and I don't know if you've seen this before. If you've been to Germany, actually in Europe in general, you see this across uh, Czech Republic. You also see it in Italy. These are plaques that are on the floor in the city. Uh, they are like this big, so they're not super big. And they read the name, uh, the year um, of a person, a Jewish person, that was deported to a concentration camp from that house. So I took this outside the building where my cousin lives. That's where I was staying with. Um, and outside his apartment building, you would see these two plaques on the floor. And you can read Elizabeth Schwartz and Margaret Wilhelm. Uh, they, this woman left for Auschwitz and she died or wanted in Auschwitz. Uh, and this person went to Font in uh, in the year 1942. This happened in the year 1943, I think. Uh, but those were two people from that building that went to a concentration camp. And you see this all over Europe. Uh, it's just a reminder of what happened during World War II, which is kind of cool. Next picture. This is uh, on the, all the cement blocks that you see right above me. So this cement blocks are uh, a memorial for the Holocaust. It's the Holocaust Memorial. 
Uh, they're supposed to represent the tombs of the people and certainty. It's also in the middle of the city, right next to that big park. Uh, and also, if you see this flag back here, this flag is actually this building. So you just walk from one part to the other. Uh, and this is the Reichstag building. And if you guys remember, there was a video we watched in class in which um, basically, sorry, I was just, someone sent me an email. Basically, uh, the Soviet Union takes charge. So yeah, the Soviet Union is going to take charge of this. Picture right here, it's a picture of where Hitler's bunker was located underneath this plaza. This is the place that Hitler committed suicide right underneath the square, which is kind of crazy that you're just walking by and there's apartments and people walking and playing and cars parking. And it's just like super normal. The next one is the Brandenburg Gate. This is uh, in between the Holocaust Memorial and the Reichstag building. Uh, it's a very touristy place right now. Uh, you can see everyone that was also there. But Brandenburg Gate uh, is going to be a symbol of the Cold War because one side is going to be the East Berlin and the other is going to be West. Um, a couple of selfies and also the Reichstag building. So again, the Reichstag building that's up here. This is the building that um, that for our siege uh, room by room by the Red Army happened and until they took control and they was they were flying the Red Army flag, the Soviet flag, towards the end of World War II. That's the top. This right here is um, this is the capital of Berlin. So Berlin's a really pretty city today, obviously. Like you could not tell just by looking at it really quickly that a lot of things has happened, a lot of bad things and destruction, because a lot of very important buildings have been reconstructed. Like this very beautiful um, um, cathedral. Okay. Then we go to a couple of pictures that are a little bit more serious. So this right here is part of the Berlin Wall. And the Berlin Wall, it's still up in some part. So we see here this, do you see that concrete wall? That is the Berlin Wall. So there's parts of the city that the wall is still up. It's not a continuous wall anymore, um, but for sure it's in some museums or even in some neighborhoods, there's part of it still. Uh, this is the wall that divided East and West Berlin between the Soviet part and then the West, Western aligned part of the city. Um, this is another memorial in which if you see these little parts right here that have information, they're telling you about the Holocaust. Um, this part where all the people are standing, um, this where, where other buildings were located and when the Nazi government was actually making their plans for the extermination or the final solution, which is pretty crazy. That I was standing right there and you're like, wow, like Hitler, Hitler walked through this wall, like it's crazy. Um, uh, me and my husband, Reed, you guys have maybe met him, comes a lot around. Um, this is the Berlin Wall. You can get pretty close to it. Um, it's crazy. Look how short my hair was. More pieces of the Berlin Wall. Like you see this one right here. It's like in a park and there's some part of it that uh, it's like rebuilt it, reconstructed. You can walk through it, just take pictures of the Berlin Wall. This was an exhibition right here. Uh, more Berlin Wall, which is just up for us to see. Uh, parts of the Berlin Wall have a lot of graffiti or art, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's some pretty famous graffiti uh, that is on East Berlin um, on the wall, and it's protected so people cannot destroy that graffiti. Uh, sometimes they mean different things uh, about the history of the city. Um, well, guys, that is just the end of the pictures that I have for you. Remember, I took this picture with myself. So I hope you enjoyed them. Uh, this is just a little video for me to share that with you, which I share every year. Um, I'll be doing a couple more videos uh, about the decolonization of Africa, primarily, which is something that I'm very interested about. So just uh, message me, email me, and if you're on Instagram, let's keep in touch, okay? So take care. Bye.